So now, after what I just showed you with those three deities, I want to keep it up with um, the Greek gods and talk about this certain deity. And like I said, if you don't know Greek mythology, you're doing yourself a real disservice even to the Roman mythology and even to the Egyptian mythology. All these stories, because you're going to be really lost when it comes to this video. As I said, this is going to be a series moving forward. There's just so much information that I have for you guys. So, But yeah, um, if you guys want the channel, I can always make a little side video for that. So in the comments, put down if you guys want me to dive deep onto the mythology and make videos on it. But anywho, like I was saying, um, because the reason why I say this is if you do your research on all these deities, you see that they all correspond with each other. So that's very interesting. And you want to look back and why is all of this that they're all representing the same thing. But anywho, the deity I want to speak upon is Heracles. Yeah, Heracles. And I know I have uh, <laughs> some people looking at me right now like, Heracles? Who's that? And then I have other viewers that know history like, oh, I know where he's going with this. And yes, and if you're thinking that it's close to Hercules, well, you, you are correct. But that Hercules is actually the Roman interpretation of Heracles that they got from the Greeks. Because as I said before, every culture especially when it comes to conquest. They always take things from the city that they uh, in siege, whether it comes to their culture, their mythology, the way of living, etc. So, yeah, but as I'll show you here about Heracles. Heracles, glory slash fame of Hera, born Alcaeus or Alcaidas was a divine hero in Greek mythology, the son of Zeus and Alcmene, and the foster son of Amphitryon. He was a great-grandson and half-brother, as they are both sired by the god Zeus, of Perseus, and similar half-brother of Dionysus. Now, remember this name, because I'm going to bring this up. This is really crucial. If you know Dionysus, I'm going to show you guys the similarities. He was the greatest of the Greek heroes, the ancestor of royal clans who claimed to be a Heraclite and a champion of the Olympian order against Falconic monsters. In Rome and the modern West, he is known as Hercules, with whom the later Roman emperors in particular, Commodu and Maximian, often identified themselves. The Romans adopted the Greek version of his life and works essentially unchanged, but added credential detail of their own, some of it linking the hero with the geography of the central Mediterranean. Details of his cult were adapted to Rome as well. Page 136, Book 2, Herodotus. Let's do it. All those who established a sanctuary of Theban Zeus, or of the Theban Nome, sacrificed goats, but not sheep. For Egyptians do not all worship the same gods in the same way. Only the gods Isis and Osiris, the latter of whom they say is Dionysus, remember that, the connection, are worshipped in the same manner by all Egyptians. For example, those who have a sanctuary of Mendes or the Mendesian district sacrifice sheep, but not goats. Now the Egyptians and all who followed their practice abstain from sacrificing sheep and claim that their custom originated in this manner. Heracles had an overwhelming desire to see Zeus, who did not want to be seen by him. Finally, since Heracles kept insisting, Zeus devised the following scheme. He scanned a ram, cut off its head, wrapped himself in the fleece, and placed the head in front of his own face, and showed himself thus to Heracles. That is why the Egyptians fashioned a statue of Zeus with the head of a ram. The Ammonians, Am 
who are colonists from both Egypt and Ethiopia who speak a combination of both languages apparently received this tradition from the Egyptians. And since the Egyptians call Zeus by the name of Amon, it seems to me that this that the Ammonesian also received their name from the appellations of this god. And I'll continue here. Page 137. In Egypt, book 2. Now to turn again to Heracles. I have heard it said that he was once of the twelve Egyptian gods. But about the other, Heracles, the one known to the Hellenists, I was unable to learn anything anywhere in Egypt. This is Herodotus speaking. Moreover, the fact is that the Egyptians did not take the name of Heracles from the Hellenists, but that the Hellenists, that is those Hellenists who established the name of Heracles as a son of Amphrathian, took it from the Egyptians. This can be demonstrated by many proofs, especially by the fact that both parents of Heracles and Phrygian Alchemen were of Egyptian descent. Continue here. And this is where it gets good. Just a little bit. Since I wish to know something definite about all this from any source I could find, I sailed to Tyre in Phoenicia. The Phoenicians, when I learned that there was a sanctuary sacred to Heracles there. And we're going to now let's do this. And I saw that it was decorated lavishly with many offerings. In particular, I saw two pillars in it, one of refined gold and the other of emerald so magnificent that it glowed in the dark. When I asked the priests of the god how long it had been since the sanctuary had been established, I discovered that they did not agree with the Hellenists. Remember, ancient Greek, I showed you guys earlier what Hellenists is, is the ancient Greeks. For they said that the century was founded at the same time that Tyre was settled, and that Tyre had been inhabited for 2,300 years. I also saw in Tyre another sanctuary of Heracles, this one bearing the infantry Thedasian. And so I went to Thasos and found that there was a sanctuary of Heracles founded by Phoenicians who had set sail in search of Europa who had colonized Thasos, which happened, in fact, five generations of men earlier than birth of Heracles, son of Amphrithian and Helios. And so this research shows clearly that Heracles is an ancient divinity. The Hellenists I consider the most orthodox of those who are founded and maintained to distract sanctuaries of Heracles, sacrificing to one as an now I'm on page 138, trying to show you guys, you all can look this up yourself, grab the book, book two, to finish it off, Immortal with Infinite Halupian, and to the other as a hero, with offerings appropriate to the dead. Remember, always incorporating it and switching things up, the Greeks did this too. The Hellenists tell many different native stories, and their myth of Heracles is especially foolish. They say he came to Egypt and was crowned by the Egyptians, who then let him direct a procession as a sacrificial victim to Zeus. He kept silent for a while, but when they led him up the altar, he turned on them with his great strength and murdered them all. The Hellenists who tell this story, it seems to me, are entirely ignorant of the nature and customs of the Egyptians. These people are forbidden by sacred law to sacrifice their domestic animal apart from sheep, bulls, male calves that are ritually clean and geese. So how could they conceivably sacrifice human beings? So now, let's take a step back and like, think about all of this. We touched about a lot when it came to Herodotus and his stories book when it pertained to Greek and ancient Egypt and we had certain similarities and certain teachings that was passed down upon the Greeks. And like I said, all this information, it's, it's in books. You just, you just got to look for it. it. It's there. You just 
got to do the research. But I know, I, I will say it's, it's, it's a book. Like you said, I always look for reference. And also, you're, you're going to have some people debate, which I'm telling you right now, this is what you're going to see online when you do your research. You're going to say like, oh, it's pseudo, uh, who right, this wasn't right. But I mean, I sold you about the Library of Medicine, quoting them using Homer and Herodotus, talking about the medicine, which is in the books also. And I also showed you about the lost city that they found by Alexandria in North uh, Africa. I mean, like, I sh there it was. They found it, and it was because of him documenting it in his book. So we can't just take one thing and then overlook the other. No. If we're going to take this information from these people, then we got to look at the whole view of it all. we got to see everything that these people did. So you can't just take everything out. So everything that came to be was credible. We have the evidence. So, like I said, I'll let you guys do your research and use critical thinking of yourself. I'm not here to program anybody at all. I am just giving out this information that is that is there. It's just you got to be willing to seek for it. And like I said, <laughs> you might have to be you might be a little crazy about history, like me. <laughs> so, but this is what we live for, man. I live for this research and to dive in because. I'm intrigued about the past of antiquity and what it holds. To understand the future, you must know the past. So, but yeah, um, like I said, it's going to be a series. So there's just so much more that we can dive into. <laughs> I mean, like I can finish it off right now, but I, I'm going to have to save this information a little bit later on. Trust me, it's, it's going to be worth it. I promise. All this information is for something. So... Again, thank you guys for taking the time to watch the video. I appreciate it. Uh, this is a series. Part two is in the works. Uh, please like and subscribe. Uh, it really does help out my channel. Um, but again, thank you guys for taking the time to watch the video. The information is there. I always have the inf uh, my links for you guys in the bottom so you guys can look up these books also and these pages that I present to you. So uh, thanks again, and I'll see you guys in the next video. All right, cheers.